Hello, my name is Pamela Roberts Lee, and I'm the author of The Darkness at Dawn, which is an historical novel that takes place during New England's turbulent 1600s. It's a novel I've wanted to write for most of my life, for John Lee, its principal hero, is my ancestor. And John Lee is also the ancestor of Prince William and Prince Harry of England. Before writing this novel, I, I had a legal career starting as a judge advocate in the Air Force right out of law school. And later in the Air Force Reserve, where I served until 1998, uh, when I retired from the reserves in the rank of colonel. While I was an Air Force lawyer, I did trials, I did claims, government contracts, and legal assistance to all of the airmen that were assigned to the bases that I was assigned to. Before and after serving as a judge advocate, I was also a trial attorney with the Department of Justice in Washington, where I enforced our nation's environmental laws until retiring in 2010 and moving with my husband to Alamogordo, New Mexico, where I'm currently the chair of our town's Planning and Zoning Commission. The core of the novel, The Darkness at Dawn, revolves around two major conflicts. The first conflict is between Richard Hawks, who at the start of the book is 19 years old, a petty thief and a murderer, and John Lee, who at the start of the novel is 13 years old, um, who is the ward of the church's lawyer, William Westwood. The book starts at sea in the middle of an Atlantic journey by a Puritan congregation who is on its way to Boston. John sees Richard steal their church's chalice during a storm in the middle of a lightning flash. The next day, Richard confronts John. As Richard saw John watch him steal the chalice and tells John he will kill Grace Newell who is also a ward of William Westwood's, if John does not swear to conceal the theft. John agrees, but only if Richard agrees to return the chalice. With few options in the middle of the Atlantic, Richard agrees. Over the next 40 years, John and Richard's conflict consumes each of them as they attempt to rise in status. Richard lies, steals, and murders his way to fortune and influence, always fearful that John will violate his oath. He makes several efforts to try to kill John unsuccessfully, and as a result, the conflict continues. Meanwhile, John becomes a soldier, a civic leader, and Indian teacher. John's guilt over his oath grows as he blames himself for unleashing Richard's evil upon his community. Nisha Hegan, who is one of John's Indian students and his brightest student, tells John how he resolved his conflict between loyalty to his tribe and his belief in God. Months later, when Richard is brought to trial for murder, he calls John as a witness at Richard's murder trial, as a character witness, that is. And when John was confronted with a question that he couldn't answer without breaking either his oath to God or his oath to the court, John remembers Nisha Hegan's story and finds a path to answering truthfully and consistent with both oaths. The second conflict is between John's doubt about the truthfulness of the teachings of his new Puritan church. It emphasizes that God is a God of retribution and arbitrariness and not a God of love and forgiveness. In the end, John concludes that 
All that really matters is what he wants to believe in. And he wants to believe in the God of love and forgiveness that his father told him of, and not a God of retribution and arbitrariness that the Puritans teach of. Now you might ask, how long did it take for me to write this novel? Well, it didn't happen overnight, but it did take less time than it took Margaret Mitchell to write Gone with the Wind, which many of you know took her more than 10 years. This novel took me nine years to complete. The first four years were consumed with research and outlining the novel's story. Five more years were needed to complete the writing. I was inspired to write this book by my grandfather's stories, which he told me about my early English ancestors who came to America. These stories lit a fire in me, and when I was older, I knew I had to write the story of this period in history because so few Americans know about it. In fact, most Americans think our country started in 1776. Now, if you want to buy a copy of this book, um, you can buy it through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Outskirts Press, which is my publisher, at their websites, as well as at bookstores where quality books are sold. So, what's next for me? Well, I've received some calls from companies that have been interested in making the book into a Hollywood screenplay and marketing it to motion picture companies. Um, beyond that, I have started working on my next novel, which will follow many of the characters, particularly the younger characters, that are in the darkness at dawn into the 18th century. I appreciate very much be given this opportunity to talk to you about my book. I hope you will find the book online at Amazon or at Barnes & Noble. And after you've read it, write a review. Reviews are very important to new books in helping their rise um, and in helping their sales. So um, please do write a review after you've read the book, and I hope you will do so soon. Thank you.